Hello and welcome to this video explaining how to use tissue Doppler imaging to assess diastolic cardiac function. First we'll go into the background of TDI and how it can be helpful in the emergency department. Roughly 6 million people per year in the US come to the ED with chest pain and about half of them require extensive evaluation due to a lack of definitive cause. Typical evaluation to rule out ischemia requires several ECGs and labs, and it can take up to 25 hours and cost two to $5,000 per patient. Lab tests such as creatine kinase and cardiac troponin levels have a low sensitivity for detecting an MI with recent onset of chest pain compared to prolonged chest pain. Alternatively, TDI with echo can identify patients at high risk for future cardiac events before ischemia is detected by blood markers. This means that TDI can be useful in ruling out patients with low risk chest pain and preventing them from staying in the ED longer than they need to be saving time and money. TDI is able to do this because of the progression of the ischemic cascade. Patients undergoing an ischemic event are clinically diagnosed when they present with abnormal ECGs and often, but not always, chest pain. Before that though, it begins with a supplied demand mismatch to the heart that progresses to diastolic dysfunction and then systolic dysfunction. TDI is capable of detecting diastolic dysfunction by assessing the mitral annular velocity of the four left ventricular walls. This is why TDI can assess risk of a cardiac event before it progresses to typical presentation. The peristernal long axis view is primarily used to assess systolic function and does not use tissue Doppler imaging. However, this view is useful for obtaining the apical four chamber view, which does use TDI. The peristernal short axis view is gained from rotating the probe 90 degrees while in the peristernal long axis view and is also primarily used to assess systolic function of the heart. It has no use for tissue Doppler imaging. The apical four chamber view is necessary for TDI and it allows you to measure the mitral annular velocity of the septal and lateral walls of the left ventricle. Finally, we have the apical two chamber view, which is also necessary for tissue Doppler imaging. It allows you to measure the other two walls of the left ventricle, anterior and inferior. First, have the ultrasound machine in cardiac mode. Usually, the indicator will be shown on the right side of the screen. To get into peristernal long axis view, you will want the probe's indicator pointed towards the patient's right shoulder. If the marker was on the other side of the screen, you would want the probe's indicator pointed towards the patient's left hip. The purpose of this is to give a conventional peristernal long axis view in which the apex of the heart is facing towards the left side of the screen. The peristernal window is located next to the sternum, between the third and fifth intercostal spaces. From the peristernal long axis view, rotate the probe 90 degrees clockwise to achieve a peristernal short axis view. From this view, slide the probe along the long axis of the heart towards the apex. Once at the apex, fan the probe towards the base of the heart to gain an apical four chamber view. In this view, you'll be able to measure the septal and lateral walls mitral annular velocities. From the apical four chamber view, you can get to the apical two chamber view. If the probe's marker is on the right side, such as in standard cardiac settings, you will rotate the probe counterclockwise to the 11 o'clock position. If the marker is on the other side, meaning not in cardiac mode, turn the probe counterclockwise to the 5 o'clock position. In the apical two-chamber view, you'll be able to measure the mitral annular velocities of the anterior and inferior left ventricular walls using TDI. While in the proper view to measure a left ventricular wall, you'll put the TDI marker on the wall of interest while in the mitral annular plane, meaning next to the mitral valve. Once you begin recording tissue velocity, you will see two negative spikes occurring in succession that are called the E prime and A prime waves. They represent diastole, E prime being early diastole or ventricular relaxation, and A prime being late diastole or atrial contraction. E prime is normally larger than A prime, 
and they have specific values recorded in centimeters per second or meters per second. Normal values depend on which wall is being recorded. To assess diastolic function, we're only going to be recording E prime waves. Settings to get into TDI mode will vary depending on what machine you are using. Typically, you will want to go into Doppler mode and enable TDI mode from then. Once you have TDI mode on, you want to place your marker on the ventricular wall in the mitral annular plane. Then you will press the same button you used to go into Doppler mode to visualize the tissue velocity. Make sure to adjust the scale to include the wave's peaks so that an accurate recording can be taken. Once good waves are visualized, freeze the frame so that you can record the E' wave. Then press the button that allows wave peaks to be measured. Be sure to mark at the very tip of the E' wave and save the image. A normal tissue velocity for the septal wall should be greater than 7 centimeters per second. Measuring the lateral wall is the same as measuring the septal wall. Remember that you need to be in the apical four chamber view. Place the caliper on the wall at the point that is in line with the mitral annular plane. Then repeat the same steps done previously to record a velocity. A normal tissue velocity for the lateral wall should be greater than 9 centimeters per second. Measuring the anterior wall of the left ventricle requires you to be in the apical two-chamber view. Otherwise, the steps to recording tissue wall velocity is still the same. Be sure to be aware of the marker on your probe and its placement so that you are aware which wall is anterior and which is inferior. If the marker is facing the 11 o'clock position, then the wall on the indicator side of the screen is the anterior wall. A normal tissue wall velocity for the anterior wall is the same as the lateral wall. It should be at least 9 centimeters per second. Follow the same steps once again to measure the fourth and final wall. A normal tissue velocity for the inferior wall is at least 9 centimeters per second. Before discussing interpretation and pathologies, it's important to note that there are two kinds of Doppler imaging, both of which look at diastolic function. The first is pulse wave Doppler, which is obtained similarly to TDI. It measures the mitral inflow velocity and shows up on the ultrasound machine as positive E and A waves. The other imaging technique is tissue Doppler imaging, which, as discussed, measures the mitral annular velocity of the left ventricular walls. On the ultrasound machine, diastole shows as two negative E prime and A prime waves. Together, these imaging modalities are used to assess different grades of diastolic dysfunction. For the purpose of ruling out diastolic dysfunction in low risk chest pain patients in the ED, simply interpreting left ventricular walls using TDI suffices. Abnormal E prime waves for a particular wall is related to diastolic dysfunction and ischemia in relation to the heart's vasculature. For example, if a patient comes in and you measure abnormal values for the septal, lateral, and anterior walls, meaning less than 9 cm per second for lateral and anterior, and less than 7 for the septal wall, you would want to consider a potential pathology involving the left anterior descending or left coronary artery.
since they are involved in the blood supply to those three walls. If another patient has abnormal tissue measurements for only the lateral wall of the left ventricle, then you would consider the left circumflex artery being affected. If only the septal wall is abnormal on TDI, then you'd once again consider the left anterior descending artery, but more specifically the septal branches of the artery. And finally, if only the inferior wall of the left ventricle is showing abnormal velocity, then you'd want to think about the right coronary artery being involved in the majority of cases. Most people's right coronary artery gives rise to the posterior descending artery that supplies the inferior wall. However, a few patients will instead have their left circumflex artery giving rise to it. This is a quick overview of what typically are considered normal mitral annular velocities of each left ventricular wall on tissue Doppler imaging. These are some important considerations when using tissue Doppler imaging. Patients with atrial fibrillation will never show a normal TDI reading because A prime waves will not be present. Make sure a patient is not tachycardic when getting a reading, as it can cause the E prime and A prime waves to fuse and give false readings. Patients with a history of congestive heart failure or myocardial infarction will always have abnormal TDIs at baseline, so this protocol will not be useful in distinguishing ischemic chest pain for these kinds of patients. And lastly, TDI is best used for ruling out low-risk patients that present to the ED with chest pain. Patients who are at a high risk should be treated and monitored as standard protocol dictates.